Hello and welcome to the Aroid Artist helping you grow. My name is Glenn Southern and I am a 3D artist. So I sculpt digitally, I draw paint and I create things for my clients around the world for TV, games and film. So this channel is all about plants and I wanted to just explain a little bit about my plant journey and how I got to this point where I can show you uh, my collections and a little bit about what I learned along the way. So take a look around at the studio and let me show you what we do for a living here. And also I'll explain to you what you're gonna see if you subscribe to my channel. So let's start talking a little bit about where I work, what I do and how I came on this kind of little journey towards doing a, a brand new plant channel. So um, obviously my name's Glenn, I've said that in, in the introduction. I'm a 3D artist based in the UK in a county called Cheshire and I run a little studio that's all about creating things digitally for clients like TV and film and sometimes game, but very, very rarely. And for things like advertising, uh, all kinds of crazy things like theme parks and experiences. And even in the last five or six years, virtual reality um, experiences where we literally go into a headset and start creating things um, in a virtual environment. But this is all about my journey to plants. So uh, where it all started is a little bit different than, than a lot of people that might be now plant collectors or, or like me, an aroid collector. So let me just show you around the studio and I'll start showing you what I do every day and that'll explain a bit about how it all started. So what I do for a living is we work for companies like uh, Sky and BBC and anyone who needs, a, say, a dragon or um, uh, some kind of a dinosaur or some kind of creature, as I say, character, anything that, that might be a little bit out of the ordinary that's not like a car or a building or, or, or anything um, that, that's very what we call hard-edged or hard surface. So I make a lot of things like um, this kind of old guy here. So he's sculpted and then 3D printed. Um, and we did this for Sainsbury's. This was part of a commercial that you might have seen a few years ago. Um, and this is where we had what's called 3D printed face replacement technology. So that's working with a lot of companies to do that. We just do the, the, the sculpting and the painting side of things. So, you, you, you know, my, my career has all been around creating things um, and, and being around people who are creating things, but me focusing on, on those m more organic things, especially like dragons and fantasy things. But to be good at fantasy, you've got to be good at the real stuff. So I do a lot of dinosaurs. I work, I work on a lot of dinosaur kind of projects over time. So I worked on um, the Fallen Kingdom, Jurassic World. I made the uh, the sculpted the opening logo for that. So you will know that kind of that's the kind of film stuff that we do. And in the studio here, this is where there was six of us before COVID. Now we're down to three, um, and it's still quite quiet with COVID at the moment. So we're in the summer of 2021 here, um, and this is the kind of equipment we'd use or I'd use. Um, so so. A lot of my life is in a dark cave, it's in here, and this is where I would do my editing after I've made the, the, the project. Um, now that's a photograph of a physical piece of sculpture, so I do a lot of that kind of thing where we would sculpt it digitally, but it comes out physically. So because I spend a lot of my life in the dark in here creating things on a computer, uh, and on an iPad, obviously we, we, we use an iPad a lot these days, so, the thing that drives me and the thing that inspires me is nature. And the things in nature that inspire me are animals and plants. So this, this channel really all came about because of my love of plants. And how I got to keeping plants is, is, is another strange story. So over the years of, of collecting animals and sculpting animals, I've, I've had lots of jobs. So one of the first jobs that I had was to photograph um, uh, a dangerous spider so, or a black widow spider. And I had to spend something like 12 weeks trying to photograph a male black widow spider uh, passing his 
little packet over to a female and it took me 12 weeks as i say 12 weeks of just waiting and getting the right time and 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 you know just being there at the right moment and while i was doing that i started collecting um uh, all kinds of i was i was sent a lot of spiders i had to have a dangerous wild animals license for it i was working for someone who had you know a lot of experience in that i didn't and, and bear in mind this was quite a long time ago but I got into looking at plants from the Far East. I got look, uh, looking into plants from Australia and that got me to collecting some plants. So I got some pothos, I got some, some epipremnum pothos. Um, I got a uh, philodendron, just, just like a standard heart leaf philodendron. Um, and I did really well with them because they're, they're pretty hard to kill anyway. But I, I started to realize that I could have these with my creatures so i could have them in the fish tanks i could put them in the back of the fish tanks i could put them in the spiders i could keep them with the spiders and then over time i was breeding spiders i was breeding animals i was drawing painting uh, you know cat, doing all of this that, that work as I, as i was building up the studio but during that time what i realized the one constant was was the plants they just weren't dying really i was doing really really well with them so i started to learn more about them and, and started to learn about you know what why why something does do well and why something doesn't do well it led me just to picking up um different plants it led me to buying things like the chinese money plant it got me into monstera small monstera i'm not a fan of any of the large monsteras but i've got a monstera species peru and i've got monkey masks there obviously the adansonii um, and then that pushed me even further. And then I started to look at spe being really specific about the kind of plants that I liked. And I fell on the fact that I have a love for aroids. When I started to look at what plants I'm starting to like, it all fell down to aroids. So I do have alocasias. I do have I do have a lot of stuff in at, at home in in the plant room, but here in the studio you can see I've got things that it's, it's a wide range of things that I've got. Um, these are, are obviously this is actually a Syngonian elbow, um, and 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 it's not variegated. Here's a creature that I made. Um, you can see that I'm heavily influenced by nature. Look at the roots on the back of his head. So I, I might be challenged to make the craziest things, but one, I have to understand how it all works in nature. So I have to be good at anatomy. Even though it's a monster or a creature, I have to know how an arm works. I have to know how a plant root works. And that's where this kind of work is, is fantastic because you could be doing anything on a given day. So this was sculpted. Um, this looks a bit like Groot from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but this was sculpted way before that. So it could well have been, in, you know, inspired by the comic, uh, one of the Marvel comics. I don't, I can't even remember because it's such a long time ago. And then I'd sculpt that and print it. And then obviously I mentioned about dinosaurs. So you can see down there in the background, there's um, there's a like what's called a Machiriceratops. So it's like a Triceratops, and then a dragon that I've I've, I've built um, at some point. And then I got. Once I got into collecting and started to understand how to propagate and, and you know, and, and really get into um, looking after and growing and understanding what, what I've got. And I started looking at the substrates. I started looking at pawn, lecker. Um, I moved on to aroid mixes of my own. And then I got into, uh, I went up a little bit of a level really and I started getting into larger philodendrons. So. I've got a couple of beauties, a couple of Florida ghosts. You might have seen this one on my Instagram running around on top of the vacuum cleaner. Um, and then I started, I mean, I do sell some of my plants, but I don't do it for selling. I do it for the love and the learning of the plants. So, I, you know, I, I do um, occasionally sell, you know, what, what, I, what I grow, but that's really not what it's about for me. It's more about the, the, the understanding and the science and the love and the, and the, the growing my understanding of the plants. So... Now, what I want to do from a, from a new channel point of view is I want to do a number of things. So one, I want to share the knowledge that I've picked up over the years of, of how I look after plants, why I use plants in certain art projects, why something makes a good plant for me and why something makes a bad plant for me, really. If I'm going to certainly if I'm going to do an installation for somebody or if I'm going to recommend um, one of my sculptures has certain plants growing on it, um, then, I, you know, I will I will have a very specific idea of which plant will work and which won't so i'll share that kind of knowledge and then also a bit of fun along the way and uh, hopefully some of my friends on instagram and twitter and 
all of the other places where I hang around can come and share some of their stuff. And we'll, we'll try and find people who are creative and artistic with their plant collections and their plant collecting. So hopefully you're going to enjoy what I do. Um, if you want to check out any of our other stuff and any of the things I've talked about, check out Southern GFX anywhere on social media. And my main 3D YouTube channel is just Southern GFX. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at, or a little quick bit of a look into, into my world. Um, and hopefully you can uh, you join me as the, as the channel grows.